In this video, we're going to talk about absolute values. First, we're just going to talk briefly about what it means and then how to solve it. We'll run through some example problems and then we'll talk about how do you translate real world situations using absolute values. So first of all, what does absolute value mean? Well, it means distance, specifically distance from zero. So looking at this expression over here, absolute value of x equals seven, what this means is that x is some number whose distance is equal to seven. So here's what that means. If we had a number line, that x is exactly seven units away from zero. Now, if you were to ask any reasonable uh, person what that means, they would probably say that, all right, well, I guess x is either seven, or I guess the other option is that it could be negative seven, right? So that sort of makes sense that those are the two possible options. But what's a procedure you could then use to be able to always solve for that? How do we solve for the number that's seven units away from zero? Well, in general, the way to solve absolute value problems is to first get the absolute value by itself on one side, and then you split it up. You set that equal to both the positive and the negative version of that number. So here, here it's sort of uh, pretty straightforward. You just set this as x equals seven. So one of the two things that you split it up as, one of the things is literally ignore the absolute value. So this problem without the absolute value, and the other version of it is ignore the absolute value, but whatever it equals, make it equal the negative version of it. So instead of equaling seven, it's gonna equal negative seven, and you're done. All right, well, let's actually do an example problem. So let's look at this first problem. X plus four, absolute value is 18. So procedurally to solve this, let's just break it down. All right, there's two possible answers here. The first one of which is literally just without even thinking, write down the equation without the absolute values. So without even thinking, x plus four, four equals 18. All right, there you go, that's one version. The other version is the same thing except setting it equal to the negative of, of what the right hand side is. So x plus four, not equals 18, but negative 18. All right, now let's, uh, let's do that. So solving this, subtracting four from both sides, we get x equals 14, right? And here we subtract four from both sides, negative 18 minus another four is negative 22. So here we get x is negative 22. So those are our two answers. So now that we have that, one thing to then do is to plug it back into the original expression and check to see if it makes sense. Now, in general, when you're evaluating an absolute value, if it's just a number, if I were to just say, new day, new question, what's the absolute value of negative 13? Again, what it means is how far away is this number from zero? And it's 13 units away from zero, right? So that's just going to equal 13. In general, procedurally, Whenever there's a negative number inside the absolute value, it's just equal to the positive version of that number. And if there's a positive number inside the absolute value, it's just equal to itself. So let's apply that here now. Applying x is 14 to this problem, let's just plug it in. We get 14 plus 4, which is 18, and the absolute value of 18 is, well, 18, so that checks out. Now let's plug in the second guy to see if it works. If x was negative 22, well, negative 22 plus 4 is negative 18, but the absolute value of negative 18 is positive 18. So bam, that checks out too. So now we're 100% sure that we did that right. Let's do another example problem. So here we have this guy. So first, let's just procedurally try to isolate the absolute value by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 3. So we get 2p minus 1 in absolute value equals, well, 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So there we have that. Now, again, we split this up into two different things. One is just, without even thinking, ignore the absolute value. So we get 2p minus 1 equals 1. And the other is 2p minus 1 equals negative 1, because we're just making that right-hand side negative. Uh, now let's solve. Adding 1 to both sides here, we get 2p equals 2. So p is equal to 1. Or here, adding 1 to both sides, though, huh, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so 2p equals 0, which gives us p equals 0. So those are our two answers, and you can plug them back in here 
to see what you get. And uh, you got to make sure that both sides, that this side is going to simplify to equal three, and it should work out. Uh, same thing with this. Let's just do this one. Now, this one looks a little bit complicated because, man, there's like two different absolute values here. But they're like terms because 2x minus 6, 2x minus 6 in absolute value, those are like terms. So here you just have like six of them, and here you just have like one of them. So you could sub so here you could subtract two x minus six in absolute value from both sides, and here on the left hand side these just cancel and you're left with just ten, and here you have six of something minus one of that, so you're just left with five of that, right? So you're left with just five, and then absolute value of two x minus six. All right, now we could divide both sides by five. We get two equals absolute value of two x minus six. And from here, the way to solve it is just like we have been doing before. Set this equal to both two and negative two. Because again, say two x minus six should equal two, but also two x minus six should equal negative two. And then add six to both sides. So two x equals, so let's just make some space here. So here we will have 2x equals 8. Then divide both sides by 2, x equals 4. And here, adding 6 to both sides, we have 2x equals, let's see, negative 2 plus 6 is going to equal 4. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So our final answers here are 4 and 2. And again, you could plug them back into this original green thing. And you got to make sure that the left and the right hand side balance each other out to check your answer. Now let's do a story problem. Uh, your congresswoman wants the tax rate to be 2% away from 33%. If this is a sentence in English, and the question is how do you translate that into math, into an equation with absolute values in it? Well, let's just, before we answer this question, let's think a little bit broadly about how we can use absolute values in the real world. In general, if you want to say that something is like five units away from four, or more generically, d units away from c, like if c is the center, and you want to talk about something that's d is the distance, d units away from it, this is the expression that will always get you there. x minus c in absolute value equals d. Because remember, the absolute value is the distance, right? So is meaning equals the distance. And this x minus c is talking about the distance between x and c. So in general, if you wanted to translate the statement, what's the difference between x and c, you would just do x minus c in absolute value. Technically, c minus x would also work, right? But then that distance between them, for that distance to equal a certain number, you just set that difference in absolute values equal to that distance. So in general, if I said, you know, x is five units away from four, so since that's basically saying the distance is uh, uh, five, right? So if it's five units away, then the distance is five. And if it's the distance between x and four, that'd just be like this, like x minus four, the distance between x and four is equal to five. And you can, again, just verify that that makes sense. If you were to solve this out, you know, you should get the same thing. So now with that knowledge, uh, let's apply that to this problem. So let's say that the congresswoman wants the tax rate to be x, and that that's going to be 2 away, meaning that's the distance. So really, it's going to be equal to 2. What's equal to 2? The distance between x and 33, right? The distance between her tax rate and 33, that distance is 2. And if we, if we wanted to solve this out, uh, we would just have, uh, there's two answers here, right? x minus 33 equals 2 again, ignoring the absolute values, but then also x minus 33 equals negative 2, right? So it equals to the negative of that. And in both sides, if we add 33 to both sides, we're going to get x equals, uh, let's see, 35. And here we're going to get x equals 31. And so these are our two answers. And that makes sense, because compared to, if we had a number line of 33s in the middle. If you're two away from 33, you're either 35 or 31. But now, using this procedure, we have a way to answer this question, even if it wasn't like obvious, even if the numbers were weird or complex, we have a procedure for how we can solve these problems.